back to T Boys TV. I hope you're well. I'm well. Obviously, this is our Group D, E, and F roundup. Um, obviously, I've done Group A and then Group B and C um, groups roundup type thing together. Uh, I hope you've all been enjoying them. But obviously, I'm going to do a Group D, E, and F one. So. Yeah, um, I'm not going to talk too much about Group D, like the games, the last two games. I'm just, well, not the England one, the, the Croatia one I will. Um, and then I'll talk about the table. So, obviously, we beat Czech 1-0, not convincing, but we didn't lose, you know what I mean? But I, I've said too much about that. Obviously, I've done a player ratings, I've done a match review, reaction, whatever you want to call it. So I'm not going to get into that, into that one too much. But Croatia beating Scotland 3-1 at Scotland's own, own ground. You know what I mean? Uh, great win for Croatia. Respect needs to be put on their name. Um, what a fucking goal for Modric. Outside of the boot, that was exceptional. Um, yeah, man, Croatia were on absolute smoke. And yeah, it wasn't to be for Scotland. As I said, they've got good wide players, but when it comes to the middle, nope. Like, you look at it, they're having to try and put McGinn through the middle and all madness like that. But obviously, I feel sorry for players like Robertson. In my opinion, he was the best player for Scotland in this tournament when they were in it. Um, it showed that he was world class. But rivalry aside, Scotland... They done okay against Eng Well, they were the better team when we played them, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, they had more chances, obviously. The result was better for them. Um, so, yeah, but their other games, they were poor. Czech Republic, obviously, losing 2-0 to them. Um, and then losing 3-1 to Croatia. So, yeah, but the way that group ended up, England won it. Now, on mine, I said they would finish second. But they won it. Um, them and Croatia. I said Croatia would top it, then England. It was England, then Croatia. Uh, England getting two wins. Obviously, the wins against Croatia and Czech Republic. Uh, one draw, which is obviously Scotland. No L's. Um, two goal difference and seven points. Now, for me, I've said it before. The wins are not convincing. Um uh, yes, we was unbeaten, but you look at a team like Italy, they were unbeaten. Uh, Belgium, I'm pretty sure they were. Yes, they were. Uh, and they all had wins. Um, and Netherlands was the other team that smashed it up as well. Um, so, yeah, you look at ours and it's not too convincing. Like, And Sterling's our only player that scored in this tournament with the attack we've got. Oh, I've said it plenty of times, it's a little bit embarrassing. Um, and he's not even been that great as well, if we're being totally honest. But yeah, we finished top. Croatia second, one draw, uh, which was to Czech Republic. Uh, one win, I didn't even start off with a win, what the hell. Which was obviously against Scotland. And a one, goal, uh, one loss, which was obviously us. A one goal difference and four points. Um... I don't really know how they actually got second on this because if you look at it, Czech Republic, they have the exact same thing. So they've got one draw, one loss, one win, uh, one goal difference as well and four points. So does that go alphabetical? I, I don't know. It's a weird one. Um, obviously, it usually goes down to goal difference, but they have the same goal difference, same wins. Like, I don't know. It's weird. If anyone knows, let me know down below in the comments. And then, obviously, Scotland bottom with no wins, one draw, which was obviously us, and two L's. Now, oh, and minus four goal difference and one point. So, yeah, but obviously, as I said, it means England play Germany, as I said in my breaking news video yesterday. Um... Yeah, I'm going to talk more about that at the end of the video, what might be happening for a little little topic. I'll explain it at the end of the video. But yeah, on to Group E. Now, in this group, you had Spain, Poland, Sweden, Slovakia. 
Uh, Spain with a crazy result, a 5-0 victory against Slovakia. Now, I was not expecting this. Um, Slovakia were, were all right in this tournament, better than I thought they was going to be, but not yesterday. Um, I think they was all right until the Bravda had done that mistake. Spain got a penalty early on, definite penalty, dirty, to, kicked... Uh, I can't remember it was cocaine, maybe. I'm pretty sure it was right in the back of the legs. Definite penalty. Uh, Morata missed it. Great save by Debravna, obviously, at Newcastle. I thought he was good until he'd done him his mistake. Uh, Spain were the dominant team from the start, uh, just causing a threat constantly. But, yeah, when he'd done that uh, mistake and it was a howler, they then got absolutely slapped up and... Spain, most of the goals were simple for him, if I'm being totally honest. And due to that win, they qualified. Um, but yeah, I'm going to talk about the next game in that group before I talk about the way the table ended up. Uh, Sweden 2, no, Sweden 3, sorry. Uh, Poland 2, now that was a great game. Sweden going 2-0 up. Um, Poland making it 2 all. Lewandowski with both goals, I believe, for um, not Sweden, Poland. Um, Forsberg with a great goal, uh, right in the bottom right. I believe that was the first goal. Um, then they went 2-0 up. But yeah, um, so yeah, it was 2 all for a while. And then Sweden capitalised from Poland switching off and got a winning goal. Um but yeah, man, it's, it's crazy for that group. Um, Sweden finished top. Two wins, one draw, zero defeats. Um, two goal difference and seven points. Now, for me, I said they would finish third. I didn't realise they'd be this good. Um, I'm pretty sure a few other people wouldn't think that. I just thought the likes of Ibra not being there, because obviously at his age, the way they wanted him in, Proves that he's still a class player. But the youngster for Sweden, I can't remember his name. Apologies, but he has been brilliant. Um, yeah, man, they are looking decent. I can't lie. Um, but yeah, as for Poland, they finished bottom. Now, I said they finished second in this group. Um, I know Poland are not that great. Like, let's be real. But I thought Lewandowski would be able to carry him over the line. But it weren't to be. But if you're asking me, Poland, they're not they're not a great team. Uh, Lewandowski is their only good player, I feel. And Fabianski, maybe. But they just don't have that sort of team all round where they can produce. And they can't just keep relying on Lewandowski. And Lewandowski is one of them players that needs a service as well. And he wasn't always getting that. Um... I think the way they was performed it is a bit little too late because if you look at their first game, 2-1 defeat to Slovakia, it's just not good enough. Um, but yeah, uh, Spain finishing second. Now, they had a very um, a weird two games, I'm not going to lie. They drew 0-0 to Sweden. Now, obviously, Sweden finished top. So when you look back at it, you're thinking, okay, all right, fair enough. But that was a boring game, I'm not even going to lie. And then they drew one all to Poland. Now, for a second, not just me, but I guarantee loads of other people were like, mm, are they going to qualify? Um, eventually they did. But yeah, man, it was one of them things where you was thinking for a second, are Spain not going to do it? Um, obviously, I don't think they'll win the Euro. They're not really a team that's in the shout to win the Euros because I don't think they're as good as they used to be. Their main striker is Morata. Like, a bang average for me. Um, they've got good players, like Thiago, obviously, Koke. Uh, they've got some good youngsters coming through as well, but I don't feel they're, they're that sort of level where they can win it. You know what I mean? I feel that might take a few years to then rebuild sort of thing. But yeah, um, Slovakia are in third. Now, I said they'd finish bottom, so, you know... Um, fair play to them. I didn't expect them to be this this decent. Uh, but yeah, man, they obviously got one win, zero draws, uh, two defeats, 
minus five goal difference for three points. But at the end of the day, they got a win. Um, and yeah, man. Um, I didn't read Spain's out, did I? They had one win, two draws, zero losses. Uh, five goal difference, five points. So, yeah, let me just go through how that group went again. So, you had Sweden top, Spain second, Slovakia third, Poland fourth. Now, the last group, the group of death, as many people said, and rightly so. Uh, the first game that I'm going to talk about was Portugal 2, France 2. Now, obviously, this was a Euro final, or was the Euro final, the last time the Euros was played. Um, Portugal winning, uh, Ronaldo coming off uh, half-time, I believe, and then coaching and having that memorable moment um, where the coach said something, Ronaldo was like, no, no, you listen to me, basically, to the players or, or something like that. Um, but yeah, man, this was a very good game. Um, moments from it. Uh, who had the first goal? I'm going to have to search that one up, people, because I can't quite remember. Um, <coughs> apologies about that. Oh, <coughs> it's not Corona. It's hay fever. Let's get that one in. Um. Oh yeah, that was it. So Portugal had the first penalty. Loris punching a player. <coughs> oh, sorry, people. Can't quite remember who it was that he punched, but. Obviously, he's just trying to punch the ball away, but he's caught the player. Definite penalty. Lloris got the yellow card. Ronaldo steps up. You know what Ronaldo's going to do. 1-0. Um, and then right before half-time, um, France have a penalty. Now, for me, Mbappe's dived. I believe it was Samedo who apparently fouled him. Now, that is the biggest dive. Um, I don't know how they're giving that as a penalty. Um, it's weird, but Benzema stepped up, scored a uh, good penalty, but it wasn't a penalty. So then it's one all at half time. You go into the second half. Uh, Pogba with a brilliant pass, and he done, bearing him also in the first half. He done a brilliant through ball to Mbappe. Mbappe didn't score. Good save by Real Patricio. But yeah, man, Pogba really played well in this game for me. Uh, great pass to Benzema to finish it. Uh, they VAR'd it because they thought he was offside, but in my way near offside. So, you know, 2 1 France there. And then they get another penalty, Portugal. I um, can't even remember this one. Uh, but I, all I remember is Ronaldo scoring. Um, yeah, I think. Was it the slide tackle? I think it was. It was a penalty. And Ronaldo is now level on all-time international top scorers, I believe. So, congratulations to him. In my opinion, he is the GOAT. Um, when you talk about the Messi-Ronaldo debates, Ronaldo's done it in every league. That's my response to when the Messi fanboys come at me. Like, Don't get me wrong, Messi's sick, but he's just sat in one league. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah. Uh, and then it ended 2-0, uh, Pogba, this was probably after the two goal, uh, four goals, sorry, this was probably the biggest chance, uh, France was starting to, to dominate more towards the end, uh, Pogba having a brilliant shot, brilliant save by Raul Patricio onto the post, I believe it was, and then I believe it was Griezmann that shot again, saved it, a double save, great double saves, obviously he's given a point. Um, thought Raul Patricio was brilliant. Uh, so yeah, that game ended two all, and then the other game was also two all. Germany Hungary. Now for me, I said Hungary would be hungry for points, and they got two points in this group of death. So you know you have to big them up, and I did think they was really good in this tournament. Um, like for for what we expected, they was. You know what I mean. Um, obviously, they still didn't go through, but as I said, to get two points with the, pr pretty much all the teams that are in that group, obviously Bayern, Hungary, are potential winners. You know what I mean? So for Hungary, you have to respect them. Um, but yeah, they, Hungary going 1-0 up. What a cross. Um, 
I'm not even going to try and say the player's name that scored, but a brilliant header as well. Uh, the cross was, oh, is unreal. And for a second, loads of people, even myself, were going, oh, oh, we could be playing hungry, you know. Um, and, you know, you thought Germany were going to not do it. Um, but, yeah, it is then... Obviously, 1-0 at half-time. Fair play to Hungary. They got the lead. Bearing in mind, this was in Munich as well. So, where predominantly the Germany fans are. Um, and, yeah. And then Havertz getting an equaliser. Now, this was a bit of a scrappy goal, if you're asking me. Uh, the ball was played in. I can't remember who by. And it was just so scrappy. Like he was. I'm pretty sure Havertz was on the line when he scored it. I don't even... There's too many players, you know what I mean, in the way. But yeah, they got the equaliser. And then Hungary going 2-1 up again. Um, now, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant by Hungary. Uh, so they're 2-1 up. And then Goretzka scores. Now, for me, he is a beast. Yeah, I know he's built like one, but he is, as a footballer, he is a beast as well. What a shot. Don't think the keeper had no chance. Just one of them where it's hit his laces. Oh, what a finish, mate. In the 84th minute. So it's 2 all. Um, but yeah, on the second goal. Back to the hungry second goal. Germany just switched off. Um, and that's what messed it up for them. But yeah, obviously that draw meant we're playing Germany. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm going to quickly talk about the group, how it ended. So, France finished top. Now, I said they'd finish top. Um, one win, two draws, zero losses, one goal difference, five points. Now, they, obviously, they've got the draws most. Um, but as I said, France haven't looked too, too convincing. But they are one of them teams. When it comes to the knockout stages, they... They tend to be on smoke. Like if you look at the World Cup ones, for example, when it came out to the knock knockout stages, boy, they was on fire, and obviously they won it. So, yep, uh, Germany second. Now, when I actually done my Euro predictions, I was thinking Germany or Portugal second. Oh, I changed last minute to Portugal, but obviously Germany finishing second. Um, I did think the manager part, because Hansi Flick is still not there. I know I said he, he is uh, when I'd done the Euro predictions and that, but he's not. Um, but he's he's watching the games, but he's just not the actual manager yet. Uh, but they got one win, one draw, one loss, one goal difference and four points. Um it's the same thing as the Croatia Czech Republic when it comes with Portugal as well. They have one point, uh, one win, sorry, one draw, one loss, uh, one goal difference, and four points. Like, I don't get how that works, but as I said, let me know if you know. And then Hungary second, uh, second, what am I on about? Hungary bottom, sorry, zero wins, two draws, one defeat. And minus three goal difference and two points. Now, as I said, hungry to get two points in this group. You have to respect it. Um, but, yeah, man. I uh, don't really know what else to say. Um, but tomorrow, there's a possibility, I'm not 100% sure yet, that there might be a live type show where it's discussions and debates and talk about Euros. Um and other stuff, there might be, so keep an eye out, uh, obviously I uploaded the watch along highlights out, uh, uploaded the watch along highlights out, oh my god, I uploaded the watch along highlights earlier, god, so make sure you check them out, um, I will put them so you can click on it when it's the outro of this video, like it is now, but you know, near the end. Um, we're on 219 subscribers, so we gained a subscriber, so big up your damn self, whoever that was. Big up everyone that subscribed, like I always say, everyone that is now interacting, um, we're getting a lot more interactions, like comments and that. Uh, big up everyone that likes, subscribes, and all of that, 
And you might see me tomorrow. Um, there's a possibility as well. I might do watch-alongs for the round of 16 games on Saturday. You've got Wales versus Denmark at 5. And we'll see how we go. Italy versus Austria, I believe. I might do watch-alongs for them. I'm not 100% sure. But if I don't do watch-alongs for them, I will do a discussion type thing about them. Um, but if I do, I'll just talk about both the games after, maybe, and put them into a... Like, if I do it live, I'll do a highlights, and I'll add that bit in the highlights, if that makes sense. But, yeah, people, uh, you might see me tomorrow, as I said. You might not. But if not... Uh, if you don't even see me on Saturday, you'll probably see me on Sunday because I'll do a England type preview for the Germany game because obviously on Monday I'm working. Uh, it's been a madness, people, recently. It's been late uh, on returning home. and I mean, it weren't too bad yesterday. It was half eight but at night, but, you know, it's sometimes I'm just too tired to even try and do a video. Um, but, yeah, people... If you don't see me tomorrow and Saturday, you'll see me on Sunday. So, yeah, people, uh, this has been T-Boys TV, as Blake would say. And I'm out. So, take care and peace.